as the election gets nearer and nearer, Prop 22 has a few new updates, including a staggering $218 million raised for a yes on Prop 22. So we're going to be talking about three different updates and some of the things that you have talked about when it comes to Prop 22. Hey everyone, Chris here for the Rideshare Guy, and today we're going to be talking about three updates when it comes to Prop 22 and the staggering amount of money that they're spending for a yes ballot initiative. And it has reached over the $200 million mark at $218 million, which is at the time of this recording. Now, there's still a week to go, so there's probably going to be a lot more money dumped into this. So I'm only imagining what the final bill is going to be when it came to how much money was actually spent. So let's get right into the three different things we're going to be talking about today. So first, we are going to talk about how much money is being spent on this bill because it is a staggering amount. Then we're going to talk about what the latest poll numbers are actually showing. And then we're going to go over the survey that you as drivers have been taking and what your numbers have been saying. And we're going to be using an article from the rideshareguide.com. A link will be in the description below. So if you want to read this article and you can see exactly what it says as well. And this is the title of the article, which is what is California's Prop 22 and how does it affect Uber drivers? And if you've been living under a rock and don't know what Prop 22 is, check out this article because I'm only going to be taking a few snippets of the three things that I was discussing. So what we're going to be talking about first is how much money is actually being spent on Prop 22. You can see right here, it's going to come down to the wire for voting on Prop 22 because of where the poll numbers are. And we're going to talk about that after how much money is being spent too. So it says a flood of news has come out recently about polling numbers and funding the for and against campaigns. As of right now, when I was making this video, the October 2020 total contribution have surged past $218 million, which is the most cash raised for any ballot measure campaign in California history. And in my opinion, a ridiculous amount of money, especially when you look at how much money was spent on the opposite side. So it's saying that the yes side money raising has dwarfed the opposition's 187.5 million to about 15 million. Now, this is according to the LA Times and could end up being the most expensive campaign in the nation. So this isn't just in California. It could shape up to be even higher. And it said as of October 24th, 10 days before the election, they added another $9 million to the Yes on 22 campaign. Now, when you're watching this, there is only one week left until the election. So you could probably bet that there's going to be even more money dumped into this on the Yes on 22 side versus the No on 22 side, swelling it up even higher. And as it said, it could be the most expensive campaign in the nation. Now, before I get to the second update, which is going to be what the poll numbers are looking like, comment below what you think about how much money is being spent on the Yes on 22 and give your best guesstimate to what it'll look like as a total bill. What will the total amount raised for a Yes on Prop 22 look like? We still got a week left, so that number is going to go higher. Comment below with your guess. All right, so what are the latest poll numbers? And is this something that is likely to pass or not? Or is it going to be all the way down to the final minute? And it's looking like it's going to be something that's going to be down to the final minute because what it needs in order to pass is a 50% plus one in order. If it doesn't meet that, it won't pass. And then AB5 will likely take effect. So now, according to the LA Times and the UC Berkeley Institute of Government Studies, they released a survey which resulted in 46% of likely voters that saying they're going to vote or already voted to support the proposal written Prop 22 and allowing drivers to remain independent contractors and offering them new wage guarantees and benefits. Now, 42% of likely voters in the survey also said that they're going to oppose Prop 22, 
and the number of undecided voters is 12%. So all in all, it's something that it could potentially pass, it may fail, and it's going to be a nail biter all the way to the end. And now let's talk about what your results were that you had shared with the rideshareguy.com and the poll that was announced in September. So they had received 609 responses. Out of these respondents, 73.7% of the drivers were from California and asked a number of questions about Prop 22, which include, are you for or against Prop 22? Do you prefer to be an employee or an independent contractor? And then why are you for, against, or undecided for Prop 22? So what it looks like, it says 60% of California drivers are for Prop 22. Out of California, 60.1% are in favor with 23.6% against and 16.2% undecided or do not know. And then it says for all of the respondents, an overwhelming 67% are for Prop 22, while 27 are against and 7 are undecided. Now, the reason why it's probably more undecided for California drivers is that they're the ones who are voting. They're the ones who have to make the decision. So they're probably going to have a little bit more undecided because they're still on the fence on what the outcome could be. Now, when it comes to the rest of the country and everybody who was polled, you're seeing a smaller undecided number. Uh, but either way, it's showing more people are for and even more people are against. Then it says 69% of California drivers want to remain independent contractors. And it's saying 11.5% want to be an employee and 19.5% are undecided. Again, this is for California. So it's still that undecided factor because they're the ones who are heading to cast their vote. And then it goes down and it says Uber and Lyft driver preference on W-2 versus independent contractor classification pre and post COVID. So you can see it's changed a little bit for the employee being 9.95% before and 17.44% after. And the number for independent contractor has decreased from 81.47 to 71.39. And then those who are still undecided, it's actually gained a little bit as well. And if you're still unsure what Prop 22 is or anything of its impacts or any questions or anything, you can check out this article. The link is in the description so you can see exactly what the newest information is as well as what Prop 22 is, uh, some of the responses for Prop 22, uh, some of the things about AB5, some different articles and uh, different comparisons about AB5 and Prop 22. You can check this out as a great resource for Prop 22 and what is going on with it. And lastly, the biggest thing is no matter if you're in California or not, all eyes are going to be on California come the next couple of weeks because it's going to be really interesting to see how voter turnout is when it comes to supporting or not supporting Prop 22 and then what its implications will have going forward if Prop 22 fails and drivers have to be reclassified 18 days later. If it passes, then a whole new law gets in the books and this whole AB5 gets sideswiped and something else comes about. So no matter what, all eyes are going to be on California, including states that are looking at AB5-like legislation and drivers who are wondering what's going to happen. And for all the updates that will be happening over the next couple of weeks, make sure you hit the subscribe button to the Rideshare Guy so you will be informed with the latest news and information regarding Prop 22, how the voting turnout happens, and then what happens after Prop 22 passes or fails. So make sure, again, you hit that subscribe button for the Rideshare Guy. All right, everyone, drive safe.